All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have been loading up a great week of content here on the Film Guy Network for you guys. Uh, we had a, a, an episode earlier in the week with Keith Marshall, a former Georgia legend, obviously, and we sat down, we talked football, and then we watched football. Well, today we're going to do a very similar format with a future potential Georgia legend, a current Georgia commit in the 2024 class, Peyton Woodyard out of St. John Bosco uh, High School out there in California. Uh, interesting, I was out, I, actually in San Antonio this year for the Adidas All-American game. And first interaction with Peyton, um, very large human being, first of all, at like 17 years old. We'll talk about that here in a second. Very large human being that plays safety and uh, actually got to be there during his commitment ceremony in San Antonio at the Adidas All-America game. He will play there this year uh, in San Antonio. So we'll be seeing him again, and we'll have plenty of content around it. Uh, excited to have this guest here with you guys. Uh, let's bring him on. Peyton, how are we doing today, brother? Yes, sir. I'm doing good. How about you, Mr. Austin? I'm doing well, man. I, I I like that. First of all, Mr. Austin's my dad. You can call me Brooks. Um, I, but you're always like that. One thing I've noticed about you, Peyton, is you come from a very professional background. We'll talk about your family here in a little bit and where they come from and a little bit more about you. Um, but bro, you show love to all the media guys that come out and, and and cover you, whether it be you know Jeff or Jeremy or Matt or myself or whoever it is. Every time on social media, I see you giving love, man. It, it, it's much appreciated. I will tell you that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Always, always. So uh, you just came from practice, right? Yeah, practice from 5 to 7 over there on the West Coast. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We had practice. And then uh, I had to coach up uh, like our powder puff, our sister school. They're doing like the powder puff game. So I had to coach them up, coach them up. And they're looking really good. So I think you coach, coach your defense and offense or just defense? Just the defense. We be, we be coming up, man. We going to look. <laughs> you probably would not get too complex, right? Just straight man, play a little single high. Yeah, man, a little bit of zone. Crazy? <laughs> All right, man, I got to ask you, you're a Cali kid coming to Athens, Georgia. Um, I guess, you know, from my understanding, you got family here in the state, but what what, what brought you here, man? Why why Georgia, of all places, to be a West Coast kid? What made you fall in love with Athens? Uh, shoot, I don't even know what it was. It's just like, I feel like whenever you walk into a place, mm -hmm. it's either you know, like, like I've been on plenty of visits. When you walk into a place, it's like, oh, I don't know about this one like and then like there's a place like like georgia like as soon as i walked in um i think my first first time i went there they're remodeling but the second time i went there yeah I, I left that place i was like oh yeah i like this place i think this, this is where i want to go this feels like it's, home so it, it is it's interesting to hear that that that's the thought process still these days like I was, I'm very much a vibes and omens person. Like, it's got to feel right when I'm there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to, not just the relationships with other people, but just the environment in general. It's got to feel okay. Whereas nowadays, it's like so many different factors, man. It's like, well, am I going to get on the field early? Or is there an NIL package or whatever? And for you to say, like, I don't know, man. It was just something about the face. I, I felt pulled. I, I feel that about Athens. Like, there is something about that city for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Most definitely. That's just, as soon as I left that place, I was like, oh, yeah, this is where I want to go. So I did. No just doubt. Uh, you, I mean, we've already talked about your West Coast kid. I, I'm, I've am i been covering football for a long time or watching football, observing football, football player myself, been in the scouting industry for almost a half decade now. It doesn't sound like that long, but it feels like a long time. And there is like this, I'm not going to say like stigma, but there is a standard about West Coast football, Southeast football. You're coming from the West Coast, coming to the Southeast. This may not apply to you because you play at St. John Bosco. It's as big as high school football can possibly get. But when you come over here and you start seeing these athletes, you've been on dozens of visits here in the Southeast. Do you feel a difference in football when you go to practices? Do you feel a difference in the level of competition or maybe just how guys play the game? Um, I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like, I feel like I'm always going to, like try to represent Cali like the most as much as I can, but yeah, um, I feel like if you're good, you're good. You know, if you can play football, you can play football. If you if you can't, you can't. You know, so like I feel like if you're a competitor and you and you you know what I'm saying you don't go out there and play and think you're the best. So I feel like there's definitely that at Georgia, and Georgia gets people from all over the place. Like you got Keely Ringo from Arizona, mm -hmm. you got dudes from the middle Midwest, and then you got like Milton from Fresno, like with like. Yeah, North Clovis, California. North, Northern California. You got yeah. Darnell Washington from from uh, Nevada. I mean, they they yeah. have luck. I mean, uh, Brock Bowers from Napa. I mean, they 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 you're you are one hundred percent correct. Nicobe Dean from Mississippi. So like uh, Xavier Trust starting left guard from Rhode Island, bro. 
Rhode Island. Like they, they, yeah, you are 100% correct. If yeah. you're a great football player, not only do you take Georgia into consideration, but Georgia's got a chance at landing you and you West Coast kids are a prime example. I, I want to talk. I haven't been. I'm going to fly. I'm, one of these days I'm going to fly out and watch one of these. But St. John Bosco, Matter Day, put yeah. me there. You got to come this year. It's like, it's crazy. The, I mean, people always talk about the ticket prices, but it's a, it's crazy, though. Like, just being in that game, it's, it just feels different than any other game. It's two. It's always the one and the number two team in the nation just going at it. And I think it's some of the best talent, not just in Cali, but in the nation. So it's just, it's just cool just to be able to play in that game and compete at the highest level. So people live watching this, you know, we we are a heavy Georgia base right here, right? So people yes, watching this will hear St. John Bosco Matter Day. They know the names, but they don't understand. That's like what I mean, of the eleven guys on each side of the football, seventy five percent of each roster, each starting roster is probably playing power five division one football. Yeah, our whole our whole defense this past year was like so like with me at safety, we have two dudes that committed to UCLA mm -hmm. and another safety that went to San Jose State. And then, like, all our corners are, like, all our, like, are all, like, it's crazy. We got one going to Stanford, one going to Louisville. It's just a bunch of different places our players are going. And um, we put out dudes each year, so it's, it's kind of cool to see and uh, build relationships with them. So I always like digging on you guys before I have you on. And I don't, I'm, not, I'm not, like, a FBI agent or anything. I don't go super deep, but I always like to call around and ask. And it doesn't take but, like, two or three phone calls to ask about Peyton Woodyard to hear the word like leadership, like the, the, the intangibles, right? Like the off field, this guy's, this guy's a Georgia guy. Like he is going to come in and be a 100% cultural fit. So I guess let's just talk about it. What, what, what are, what are your leadership styles? Like, are, or what, what would you identify yourself as, as a leader? How, how would you characterize Peyton Woodyard? You know, not necessarily the football player. We're going to talk about that here in a little bit, but Peyton Woodyard, like a member of the culture of the university of Georgia. Um, shoot, I, I like, like, sometimes I'll talk, but like more of like, more of like want to like lead by example and just show, show people like how to, how to, how to carry yourself a certain way and how to act when you're not just on the football field, but off the field. So when you're on the football field, you're, you gotta be a different, uh, <laughs> a different person, you know, you can't be so friendly, but you also gotta just be able to lead your team and be able to build that bond with your teammates and, they 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 don't want to follow just a random dude, you know. So they want to mm -hmm. follow someone that they trust and they know. So um, I feel like you want to go to go to war with your brothers. And I think Georgia does a good job with it. Coach Kirby told me they do something like like uh, they do some like bonding activity. I'm not sure exactly. Skull sessions. Yeah, was it? Would you say uh, skull sessions? Skull sessions. Yeah. So it brings the team close together, and I think it's it's cool. Like you ready to go to war for your brothers? So you don't just got like one leader here, one leader there. You got bunch of dudes that are ready to to go you know so I think you know one thing I, i've always respected about like just being an observer of what georgia does from a cultural standpoint these skull sessions that you're talking about yes sir dude every football program i've ever been a part of that wasn't like georgia and that i wasn't like super close to but i was a part of it was all compartmentalized right like your offensive line group hung out together your offensive players hung out together your tight ends and wide receivers kicked it together, right? Your running backs were always buddies. Rarely, if ever, did, were you like best friends with the corner if you were a center. Or, if, you know what I'm saying? Like these cross relationships where team building is actually like created, where like we are one. Not just we are two separate units, where we are one. And these skull sessions that you're talking about, Peyton, you're not just going to be in a room with your room, right? The guys that you go to war with from an individual standpoint every day and in indies and all that good stuff. You're going to be like sitting across from your offensive tackle and learning about who he is as, a, as a, an individual and as a human. And they say, learn the why, right? Well, you hear that all the time at the University of Georgia. Um, and I think that's very, very important. And it, it sounds like they're, they're, they're selling that, not necessarily selling that, but they're talking to you about that in the recruitment process, huh? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Like, we don't always just talk football. We talk about everything. And that's what, that's what I really like about the, not just Coach Kirby. Coach Kirby, he's a, he's a great dude, man. He's just like, I don't know. He's a player's coach for, coach for sure, and he gonna, he's going to light that fire, I think. Uh, him and his staff do a great job. Coach Fram, Les Champ, they, like, I can't I can't praise them enough. I was th That was my very next question, those three names. Kirby Smart, Will Muschamp, Fran Brown. 
the I, I'm not going to ask you to put them in the order of importance of your recruitment, but there had to be a guy that took kind of the the lead there, right? And some other guys that kind of helped out along the way. But as a as a guy who's going to probably play safety and maybe cross train at star as the rest of every defensive back does at Georgia, those three guys are going to be vital to your development moving forward. I'm, I'm curious where, where where those guys were in the relationship and and maybe a little bit of a you know tidbit about each guy. Yes, sir. So I had a relationship with Coach Fran like first and just just started building that and we had we had a great relationship. We still do, you know, and uh, and then started talking to Mush Champ and then. Uh, Kirby and it just it just all felt right and um it's it's cool because you don't get coached up by all three of those dudes. Like I've seen that practice, like they'll be the safeties with uh Mush Champ and then they'll swap with a uh, friend in the corners and stuff. And it's kinda cool just to see them get coached up by both. And then I seen uh Kirby just out there in the ears of the safeties, he's in the meetings with the safeties. It's, it's just because Kirby plays safety and, and yeah. Mush, so it's just like why would you not want to get coached by three, three of like some of the best uh, DB coaches out there? It's not some of the best. I mean, Fran Brown is the youngest, hottest name at defensive back in in college football. Um, yeah. Will Muschamp is stamped like he's got he's he's reached head coach status because of his knowledge as a defensive backs coach. And as you mentioned, like if I say this all the time on this network, if you polled every single college football coach in America and you said. Who is the best defensive backs coach, head coaches included? Kirby would probably get like most, a lot of those votes, and Nick Saban would probably get the second most. Like that, they are the best defensive back minds in the in, in the world of college football. Um, yes, sir. I saw, I saw Chris Smith drop your name at the NFL Combine. Hmm. What, what, what? Where's the relationship have like come from? How does he already know about Pepe Woodyard? How's that happen? Oh man, we just be like chopping it up here and there, like. Through messages, and then uh, I got the chance to meet him when I went out there, and he's, he's a he's a great dude, man. Like you don't come across a lot of people like that. And his film, and in my opinion, if you watch it, it's just like it's just like I don't know. I, maybe it's just because like I'll be watching a lot of Georgia stuff, but I'll be watching Chris Smith's film, and like I seen him make a tackle one time. It was the first first game against Oregon. He was like 15 yards back, came up and made a tackle, made like mm-hmm. a two yard. Lost uh, tackle for loss. Three, Left sideline, yeah. stuck the kid like yeah, right at the sticks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not, not and yeah, and that one too. But mm-hmm. it was one where like he came like right around, right off the tackle, and he, it was crazy. I was like, bro, not a lot of safeties can do that. So uh-huh. he always moves first. It's, it's what I always loved about watching Chris on tape. I mean, the the combine numbers are what the combine numbers were, but always moved first. Always was in the right spot. Always, you know, is a film junkie too. Sounds like you are. Sounds like that's who you study. You, you you study a lot of Georgia tape is what it sounds like. Yes, sir. Our our defense is very similar at Bosco, so I'm just like excited for the transition. Just go there and work and get bigger, faster, and stronger, and just apply all that on the field. So it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be exciting for sure. So they're currently in the middle of spring practice. Obviously, you just got back from a a visit up there. Um, I mean, you you've seen practice a couple of times by now. Um, I'm not asking who. I'm asking what. When you go to the University of Georgia's practice, what stands out to you the most? When you leave, what is the impression? It, it was like so. Last, uh, I think the first one I went to, it was very, it was high intensity, like probably like a year ago in the summer. Uh, it was like very high intensity, but this last practice was, it was very high intensity. Like it like went like this. They're just they got it was like the day they got back from uh, spring break, and Ooh. it was just like it went quick like this. Like but they're moving fast. Everyone. Coach, I think Coach Muschamp said they got like 50 or 60 something reps, and that's like, I was like, bro, that's crazy, it's crazy. Like each person got like a bunch of reps, double digit. It was like crazy, something crazy. And I was like, yeah, a lot of programs don't don't do that. Like that's what's different about Georgia. They they get their work in. Like everyone's gonna get their work in. Everyone's gonna get right. And um, shoot, everyone's gonna get their their chance to to get on that field, man. I think the thing that's always stood out to me most, and I hear a lot of people say, it feels like Kirby sees everything, right? It feels like he's at practice and he's like always on, like he always sees everything he's supposed to. And my thing has always been, it seems like his eyes are always in the place that they need to be. It's always like he's chewing the right ass. You know what I mean? Like he's getting after the right person when he's supposed to be. That's always the thing that stood out to me. Um, I saw an interesting tweet on your timeline today, uh, a retweet. Maybe it was not today the other day it was it was from kyle kyle hamilton um I, I, 
What's up? I said, oh, yeah, wait, what, was, what was it? I forgot. What, what so was it was it? an NIL tweet, and it, it, and it oh, said, yeah. quote, it said, quote, NIL is cool, but revenue sharing seems much more fair. Each NS, NCAA conference allocates the revenue brought in by sport, by a sport, excuse me, then evenly distributes it a uh, percentage across the sports athletes. NIL can be the differentiator in earnings. And then he put make more plays equal more endorsements slash deals. Um, something tells me you have an interesting stance on NIL. I'm, I'm curious what role it played in your recruitment because we already talked about it. One of the first questions you said, I just had a feel. I had a feel about the University of Georgia. What role does it play and has it played and does it continue to play? Because I know you're still getting phone calls, dude. Like you're a really good football player that's still six, seven months from signing on the dotted line. It's, you're not not getting phone calls. Yes, sir. Uh, and I, it was definitely crazy. Like uh, numbers get thrown around. It's just like uh, crazy business, I guess. But I feel like you want to go where your heart is at because like at the end of the day, you you go somewhere you, you're not happy at. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. if you – Go where your heart's at. You are gonna put in that work and next level in the NFL is when you get to pay the big bucks. So, and like Kyle said, like just make more plays, it gets, it gets you more money. So, it's just it's just cool. So, um, yeah, I definitely agree with my cousin hundred percent on that. So, I mean, it's it's interesting, man. I, I, I we don't have a sample size for it enough, right, to actually have the, the the metrics on it. But I would love to in a couple of years track like. We don't actually have public knowledge of the NIL deals, but we kind of know. We kind of know what's going on, if you know anything about what's going on. And I would love to connect like, hey, here's the NIL schools and here's the NFL schools. You know what I'm saying? Here's the guys that are putting guys in the league because you are correct. The NFL money is what you need to get to, to pursue, right? Georgia's had – set. they're going to they're gonna have almost seven, maybe eight if Keeley's a first-round draft pick, eight guys off that 2021 national – championship defense that are going to be first round draft picks yes, sir. That's, at, that's at minimum 13 million dollars so like no nil package is ever going to amount to that um hey we got a saying around here we shut up and grind the tape you want to watch the football oh yeah yeah let's get you, to you it. want to watch some of your football and then hey uh, i got some georgia tape too we might want, we might crack into that if you were watching some of that if you got some time um, oh yeah that's, that's cool i'm with it yeah, let's do it let's do it all right, let's watch your tape first. Let's let, let's show the audience who Peyton Woodyard is as a football player. Um, I think they've got a good idea who you are as a person. Um, here we go. Uh, playing center field safety, you feel comfortable back there? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I feel I feel good. <laughs> Cut a little speed turn in there. I love how you find the football. Every everywhere I've seen you, I saw I saw you in seven on seven a couple a week ago or so. Um, always eyes on the ball. When when did you start tracking the ball and and knowing that you had a knack for going and getting it? Uh, probably in baseball, man. You're always tracking the outfield and the, the outfield. So um, that's probably when I first started tracking balls, man. So I I, I, I should have known that background, baseball background. I checked into that. Um, yeah. Love that from a, 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 a quarterback's perspective, as a safety's perspective, just as much. Y'all, you're just right. They call it center field safety, being able to track it. You said y'all play a similar defense to Georgia. It's a split safety look. Like you're going to be doing a lot of this where you're, you know, playing over number three and rolling down into the box like this clip portrays. Yes, sir. You feel like your physicality is is something that you you obviously need to bring to the table and do bring to the table. Yes, sir. I feel like um, you want to bring versatility versatility to the table as well, not not just be a safety, but be a DB. You know, be a complete DB. I think that's what Chris Smith was talking about. So um, you want to be able to come down, cover a little bit, be able to. Uh, be physical and also be able to play in the post and uh, play. So the ball. I like I, I'm I'm a big spatial awareness guy. Okay, and the way I judge spatial awareness on tape is whether or not you move around bodies that are in front of you like easily, right? Like this guy thinks he's got an angle on you. Okay, this receiver that is attempting to eventually block you, um, you're going to slip underneath him just by banana peeling him because you know you can't. Yes, sir. That guy never touches you. <laughs> That's that matter day game. How many people are in the stands there? That was crazy. It was like, I don't even know. Uh, that was the first game. The second game, which is on this next clip, it was like, it was a lot of people there too. I think it was like double digits though, like a thousand. Let me ask you a real question here, Peyton. Could you have gotten to this football in the air? It was pretty far, man. That was like all the way in the corner. That wasn't even like, 
I don't know. I hope what I were your, I, what, what were, what, from the wide shot, what were your first key steps or your key read steps like? Did you take them properly? Uh, yeah, I was like, as soon as I looked, like, I seen him check something, and I was like, all right, I got to get over it. I got to get out. <laughs> he had the ball for a little bit, and then I, I, I hit him, and then the ball came out. Shoulder first, right? There was a little helmet contact in there, ref. Yeah, no, nah, there's a little video. It's a close up. It was cool. I noticed you're a mouthpiece out guy. You're a mouthpiece out guy. <laughs> nah, I have a, talking? I'll be wearing a little something in there though. Like, oh, like, okay. So the, the big pacifier is just for the drip. Hey, I'll, yeah, yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> Other thing I've noticed about you, and this this might be because y'all play so I mean you you don't have spring football, y'all play spring seven on, don't you? Uh, Out in Cali? Yeah, yeah. I haven't been much of a seven on guy. It's my first year playing a few uh, few tournaments, so so where does this come from? Because you look super natural, at least like comfortable. I shouldn't say natural. You look comfortable in man on and catch face. Uh, that's just practice, man. We be at practice guarding each other, and we have some really good receivers. So, um, yeah, just guarding them is good. We got we had DeAndre Moore. He was like a five star. He had a yeah. Texas. He was really fast. Had to guard him every day. So when we get to college, you know, we got to probably probably attack with a little bit lower pad level here, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's one thing I'm for sure working on. You, I mean, you're a willing striker. I will give you that. You will you will definitely stick your nose in. Yes, sir. Like that right there. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, you are you are a bona fide 6'2", aren't you? 6'2", about 205? Yes. No, nah, not, not 205, like 190, so, like almost 200. Almost 200. So you'll play at 210 by the time you're a sophomore in college? Yeah. I think once I get to Georgia, I'll be like good 200 and some change. Because there is some, you know, there is some, uh, uh, like, power in the pads left to be had here, right? Sure. Like, we we can we, – I call it yards after contact, basically, for the ball carry. There's something I actually talked to Chris about, something he drastically improved upon uh, throughout his career. If you watched him when he first stepped in for uh, Richard Payton, like when he would, when he would strike guys, okay. I mean, he would strike, but guys would get like a yard, yard, yard and a half. They would fall forward, right? And then as you would see Chris progress throughout his career, he would add weight on, but he would strike with power in his pads. So like that Oregon play you talked about earlier, we might watch it here in a minute. That Oregon play you talked about earlier, there were no yards after contact on that shit. They went, they went straight like that, didn't they? Okay. Yeah. So that that that's that next. We talking about areas of improvement in our football game. Even though we're a top one hundred player in the country, there still is some. This is what I love. We talked about key steps earlier. Talk to me about this. Walk me through this because you immediately gain ground here. Boom, right there. You immediately take a gather step out. What are you seeing? Uh, he so like I think he like we he weaved over, well not weave but stem me to the left a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I kind of like I kind of just imagine him running a corner rock. And I think they ran it uh, earlier before in that game. So I was like, all right, yeah, I feel a corner route coming. So I get my hands on him and then run to him on the top shoulder. I mean, this is the definition of it, right? There's the gather step, getting back out, not letting him stem you. And then we get back to a shoulder square feet flat position right at point of contact. And I guarantee we get hands on right. Yep, we strike too. So, I mean, that's the definition of it. Yes, sir. Do you feel more comfortable doing one or the other? And, and, and what I mean by that is do you feel more comfortable being in – like catch man versus being the center field safety, do you prefer one or the other? Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, but like with like the safeties we had at our school, I would always be like the one that would come down and cover. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we get yeah. you some, we get you a box clip right here. Now, this ain't really gonna, they're running wing T. There's a clip in here I want to talk to you about from the, these, these jokers. This dude's big as hell. I don't oh, know who yeah. this is. Who is this? Do you know his name? Nah, he was from uh, I forgot where he was from. Was, Bro, he a good, he a good six three, isn't he? Yeah, nah, he was a good. Yeah, he was like six three and like two two ten. And so this is how we attack six three two ten, huh? Yeah, we, we both. You should, you, bro, you didn't have no, you didn't have no uh, regard here. You went straight in after it. Yeah, but my head was hurting a little bit, but it's all good. You gotta, you gotta come in. Sheesh. Love it. Love it, man. I mean, it is a very violent. I want to get to the punt return stuff because we can see the baseball background. I also, 
I, I'm going I'm to guess the 40 guy off the tape. I know you haven't ran verified. I don't think you've ran verified 40s, but you're a 462 guy, aren't you? You're a 464 guy? Yeah, no, nah, I ran, I ran a, uh, I can run like a four, four, five high, four, high, four, five. High four fives? Okay. Yeah, four, five, there we go. Four, six, two, high four, last, five, about the yeah. same range. Last year, I ran like a four, four, six on a laser. Yeah. For Bosco, because we have the lasers at Bosco. Of course you do. What don't you have at Bosco? <laughs> There's that there's that four high four five. <laughs> I love dude. This is this is greasy. This is greasy, greasy hips. Look at you opening to the field here on this next clip. Okay. You're gonna open like to this little chief uh logo right here, right? And then you're gonna see he's hitting you with a bang eight. We're gonna drive back down on an inward breaking route here. What are we doing for our hip mobility, brother? Oh uh, man, we be doing hurdles at uh track practice. <laughs> Oh, uh, this year we got to get to that football. Yeah, need that, man. All right, you're rolling into the box here. I wish I had a better angle of that. That was good, though. Would you stick a, did you stick a tackle? Yeah. Yeah. Always, always good when you can go in there and, and get you one of them big fellas and let him know, right? Yeah. <laughs> stick. Is that is that who I think it is? Is that that back? Who is that? Uh, I think that yeah, that's Jordan Davidson. He's good. He's a class below me, but he's big. He's like a good two two something. So you're all Bosco trained. You don't have a you don't have a DB specialist. You don't I got like that. I, I'll be training uh, with a uh, DB uh, Jerron. Jerron Johnson, okay. he's one of my dudes. And I used to train with Coach Wadu. He he ended up going to Oregon. He's a coach there now. So he, he's a he's a real the, great the bulk of your development has been at St. John Bosco. Yes, sir. That's impressive. Oh, bro. I need that, man. Bro. <laughs> Come on, dog. Hey, tough. you fought over it though. I, I like I like when guys actually like try to locate they not only did you locate the football, you try to make a play on it. Like most yeah. guys would just body up this tight. That dude, that dude was big too. He was like good six foot. <laughs> I, was ah! like, I was mad. I was mad that I was mad at that. So I was mad. So mad at that. This is what I'm talking about. This is the hey. We can still, we can still add this to our bag, right? Like we 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 can make this a, a head across hit, right? Yeah. Instead of, a, instead of an arm tackle, it turns into an arm tackle, right? Yeah. Shouldn't have been, uh, yeah. That's much better, attacking the near hip. Yeah. I'll be trying to rip the ball after I make contact, too, like, on the hey. uh, Yeah. It's the most, it is the most valuable thing. I think as, like, football has progressed over the years, turnovers have become much more valuable. Almost like if we give up yardage, that's okay. Let's value the turnover more. I think we're, uh, I, I, dude, the willingness. That's all I want to see. That's the the willingness to to walk in there, stick our nose in it, um, and, and and strike. Hey, I'm gonna say goodbye to the YouTube audience, and we're gonna watch some Georgia tape. You got 15 minutes to watch Georgia tape? Yeah, 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 most definitely. Let's do it. Um, YouTube, appreciate you for being here. If you want to check this out, patreoncom forward slash Brooks Austin. That smile on that face, dude. That that's because we're talking football. You like this stuff, don't you? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Let's continue. We're gonna continue over on patreoncom forward slash. Brooks Austin. All right, my man.